Welcome to Off the Press, our newspaper review program, where we take a look at the national dailies and try to also dissect it as much as time would allow us to do. With me to do so is Chris Nwandu. He will be joining me in this review uh, remotely. He's the publisher of uh, CKN News. Good morning, Mr. Nwandu. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well. Thanks for asking. How are you today? I'm fine. Thank right. you very much for having me. All right. So we have a couple of papers to review this morning. We shall begin with the Punch newspaper, and it will be already displayed. Thank you, guys. And it says, MPA tackles whistleblower over $1 billion uh, secret account claim on page 11 of the Punch newspaper. Buhari and others mourn as business mogul Bode Akindele dies. The story is on page Eight. Again, AGF and army re refuse to produce killer soldiers as Wadumay's trial begins on page 16. APC interim panel to visit Tinubu begs members to withdraw suits on page 2. Getam hands over to Buni, commends Buhari for saving the ruling party. All right, we have picture stories of some work going on there. Federal government okays primary six. J3 SS3 resumption ends interstate lockdown. The story is there on page two. Uh, very quickly before we just go down, the figures for the COVID-19 globally and locally is there. Just to say that Nigeria has passed the 25,000 mark. We are at 25,133 confirmed cases. Discharged cases, 9,402 uh, deaths so far, fortunately, 573. Right, let's go down uh, the paper down there. It says, Ondo travelers, abductors, Ondo travelers abductors reduce ransom to 10 million naira, 10 million on page nine. Police arrest two for siphoning fuel from Lagos homes. The story is on pages four and six. And then power grid has collapsed 108 times after privatization, according to TCN on page 19. I'll hand over now to you, uh, Mr. Chris Wando. Which story should we take a look at this morning? Um, I, th I think I, I should, uh, we should take a look at the stories uh, coming from PTF, COVID-19 PTF, that uh, uh, broke yesterday, where some um, uh, decisions we are taking mm -hmm. on how to move forward, and um, some of the decisions taken, uh, which has been approved by the president, President Muhammad Dubuari, um, goes to show that uh, we are starting to unlock gradually, as right. it were. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, we have to start moving on. Uh, we can't be starting. Other countries are already unlocking and moving on. Um, so when I look at the various um, options. And decision taken by the PTF, I totally agree with them. Um, to start with the issue of schools, uh, as rightly mentioned, uh, primary six students, JFS three students, as well as SS, SS three students have to resume um, uh, because of um, because they have to take their exams. Um, so um, we we'll just have to go ahead with that. Then also when you look at interstate um, uh, ban uh, movement. Uh, that has also been uh, lifted so people can travel from one part of the country to another. I have always been an advocate of that because um, it's so obvious that um, that lockdown or interstate ban was not working at all. Uh, people have been flooding it here and there. Uh, security agencies might have been making a kill in terms of money and the rest of them. So uh, that itself is also very, very good. Then also, uh, economy, we have to, the airlines have to start flying. And um, it's also part of uh, repeating the and uh, kickstarting the economy. So the airlines will be flying in that from now. Um, but also, certain protocols have to be taken. And you have to be at the airport at least three hours before the flight stops. So that's right. So that you go through all the necessary check ups. And I just saw the possibility that the, definitely the, the, the flight, the place will not be flying at full capacity, probably 50% or 70% uh, in order to observe the protocol. So for me, I think that is just the way to go. Mm -hmm. And uh, now Nigerians also do not take the, um, their protection into their own hands and do the right, do the right thing mm -hmm. uh, in order to stay safe. Mm -hmm. So for me, uh, that is a good one. 
just to reiterate for those who did not hear that, you know, um, the places open will be daycare, other primary school, secondary school classes, higher institutions will remain short, uh, apart yes. from JSS3 at SS3 that will resume, and then the interstate lockdown locks, but the domestic flights would resume. Churches, mosques, cinemas remained closed, uh, just Let for me. the sake of our... Uh, our audience is there. All right, APC interim uh, panel to visit Tunubu and begs members to withdraw the suit. What's your thought on that? That's a good one. Uh, reconciliation must begin. And uh, who do you, the first point of call, obviously, have to be the national leader of the party, um, Ashwa Dibola and met Tunubu, who to some people seems to have. Um, uh, lost um, some power as it were so say because uh, it was one of those the key members that backed the uh damso um nwc so uh with the tsunami that happened a few days ago we had the end of this was swept away and um adam Oshomole also lost his job um the uh, the technical committee um wants to embark on reconciling Reconciling all the different factions as well as the uh, uh, various leaders and opinion leaders, and uh, uh, most of the those um, that the hem of our affairs of the party. So they were talking with Akadu uh, Bola Tinubu this week, and from there they will now move to other uh, key members of the party. So for me, it's a good one. That's a good start. Don't forget that Ashwaju himself came out with a statement. Few days ago, supporting um, the president, what the president had done, and calling for everybody to reconcile in order to move the party forward. Mm. So it's a good work. So let peace reign. All right, let's go to, in the interest of time, we will take the nation newspaper and I'll read out uh, what's there in the nation newspaper uh, very quickly before it is displayed. It says, electricity tariff hike to wait as Lawan and Wajabi Amila intervenes. Um, but on top there again, business mogul Akindele dies at 88, Buhari Olubadon Makide Mon, God rest him. The story is on page 28, please grab a copy for details. Kogi sieges death raises issue on state's virus status, we'll come to that. That story is on page 3. And then um, certificate forgery, court strikes out suit against the Baseki, APC seeks support for Ize Yamu, ADC confident. ADC, all right. Minister CSO's converse peaceful election. And these are more you'll find inside the story, inside the pages of the nation newspaper. That's for Edo 2020. Now, COVID-19, 18 councils with 60% of cases for lockdown. And uh, in places like in Lagos, Abuja, in Edo, and Kano, by the way, tops the list. We'll come to that also. Again, we have the figures. Uh, to the right there. Um, all prices rise on improving data on page 26, I believe, of the Nation newspaper. And just down there, we have a picture story. Um, final class pupils to resume for exams, safe resumption of airports for flights, lift of ban on interstate travels, enforcement of no face masks, no service. Good one. We have um, APC to begin reconciliation, as we've said. That's at the top down, the down part of the paper. Quara lawmakers, okay, suspension of council chiefs. All right, Mr. Wandu, um, COVID-19. Let's talk about the places in Lagos with uh, highest numbers, and they'll be put also under lockdown. How do we move from there? When we're talking about reopening the economy, just... Uh, you have, as you had explained earlier. Yeah, that would be a typical one. I don't know how to go about that. Um, some um, local government uh, have been identified uh, high risk areas where the, um, the pandemic seems to be on the rise, um, especially in Lagos, certain local governments were identified. Um, then if you are going to do a lockdown, I don't know how they want to lock down. Are you going to say people should move from Ikeja to yeah. the island? or should we move from uh, Loki to uh, the mainland and the rest of them? That would be difficult. I don't know how they want to go about that. Mm. And uh, if we open up other parts of the country, that we're going to do that. 
That to me doesn't need to allow this to make the best we can do on that in circumstances, but we continue to call on people to observe the necessary protocol, put the right things, wash their hands, use sanitizers, uh, use face masks as much as possible, try to do some level of uh, enforcement. But that you are going to confine certain people uh, in certain local government um, from moving, that would be a huge problem. I don't know how you're going to do that. Are you going to block the various entrances? into and out of those places. If you block places like VI, um, uh, Lekki, Ikeja, um, Kushofe, uh, some of these other local government you are talking about. So what is that of Lagos? So how do people move? That for me would be very, very difficult. So mm. I don't think that would be necessary. Yeah. Uh, if we are lucky, we are lucky. So we'll continue to talk to our people to do the right thing mm. in order to be safe. And um, so, and also we continue uh, making sure that we are building up our capacity, testing, our testing, must improve. Uh, we are not testing as much as we can. Uh, presently, we have just about we have about um, thousand uh, people tested, uh, and all um, okay. um, tested and rest of them. But we need to do more. Um, that's my take on that. And just maybe there will be more clarification, you know, from maybe the state government, because if you say you're going to lock down certain areas, how about the schools? And there are people and students from these areas who are expected to begin to prep for their exams. We are not so sure what will happen to them. So we hope that in the coming days we'll get more clarity on how this will be done. All right, let's move away very quickly from that story and another item from the Nation newspaper um, that gets your attention. Uh, electricity tariff, tariff hike to wait as Lawan and Bajabi Amila intervene. Have you been impressed by you know, our electricity supply generally? If I may ask you before we go into the crux of the matter. Um, you, you, already, you already know the answer to that. As a Nigerian, there's no, there's no Nigerian out of uh, over 200 million of us that are satisfied with the electric, um, our electricity supply. <laughs> Where I live in the past 48 hours, I've not had lights. So, um, and, uh, <laughs> and this is Lagos. So you can imagine what happens in other remote parts of the country. Um, so there's no need for that. Uh, for us, we don't talk about it. We don't have, we have been having collapses and collapses of, um, of, um, all the uh, supply chains, mm. um, we, are not we are generating, we are not even generating more, and we are not supplying, and we are not distributing enough. Then in the height of, uh, uh, in that, people, you are trying to hike the prices. Then as well as um, there has been, uh, when this started, um, it has been said that everybody must be metered. But if you look at the number of Nigerians that have um, prepaid meters in their houses, you'll be shocked. So we, they continue building uh, based on the estimated building, we are not having the electricity, but on a daily basis, we are increasing it. So I totally agree with the National Assembly. But the problem I have with that is that if we continue going uh, on that route, we might have issues. Because uh, if you say you are privatizing a company, you have to privatize and just leave them to do their things. That is basically because they have to make profit. If that profit is going to translate into uh, better electricity supply, I'm, I, I'm for that. But um, if you say, okay, you, have, you privatize the company, I mean the discos, and the, on a daily basis you continue detecting to them also how much they're going to charge, that in itself is going to be a problem because investors will not want to come into a, a, a system like that uh, where um, uh, prices have already determined and at the end of it, so when you look at their profit margin and they're not making it, um, it will be a problem. Don't also forget that there have instances where some of the uh, these schools have been complaining of how much is being owed them by the federal government and the rest of them. So um, it has been a big challenge, and I don't know why this uh, the power sector in Nigeria has been a terrible um, system issue since independence. If we can get it right in, in our power sector, definitely every other part of, the, part of the economy will pick up. But on a daily basis, the SMT are the SMEs are dying. Of, uh, companies are dying and laying off people, and um, we're having serious challenges of um, generating and uh, uh, distributing. We are not even improving the capacity as it were. So that in itself is a big challenge for me. 
Uh, like you rightly said, that we've not been able to get it right in terms of uh, the power sector in Nigeria. In you know, in our station yesterday, we had a full segment, you know, discussing power, and even this morning. Uh, but it seemed like you said it's a bit difficult. Hopefully, we will get to a point where we would not be having conversations so much as this around the power sector. Let's move on to. Um, Another piece of another item there on that paper. Edo 2020 um, certificate forgery court strikeout suit against Obaseki and others. J just your quick thoughts on what is going on there before we move on to another paper in the interest of time. Some of, some of us already know that um, it was just a ploy to deprive uh, Governor Obaseki get of the APC. All those that went to court that the guy had a uh, Court certificate, this and that, supporting the show money. We knew from the onset that that was because uh, University of Ibadan, uh, the university he attended, had come out to say that this, uh, this young man attended our university. Hmm. And they came out to, you understand what I mean? They came out to public. So, who are you to say that uh, his certificates were forged? If the um, higher institution which he attended had come out to say that, yes, uh, the whole plot was to make sure that he didn't get the APC tickets which they have achieved, and they have moved to PDP. And um, the PDP have um, embraced him, and um, he's now going to fly their flag. So we are going to see how he's going to pan out come September 19th. Okay. But between him and the candidate of that of the PDP, um, but we know that this is what's going to happen, and, um, and they have achieved their end. So uh, they are moving, they are moving ahead. Bantas also continues. All right, let's take uh, the Guardian newspaper in the interest of time. We will just touch the items on that newspaper that we've not talked on on other previous paper. So the federal government lifts ban on interstate travel, okays local flights, uh, consumers and operators pitch battle on pay TV. The updates on COVID-19 is there. But if you go further down, uh, that's where the, the stories we've not looked at. Why tariff increase uh, won't solve power sector woes, right? Experts one of more coronavirus cases, deaths in the coming weeks. Uh, that's on page three. And evil leaders fume as fake Ohanes Ndibo registers with CAC. That's on page eight. And Kado Speaker and CP risk jail over lawmakers' suspension. What's your thoughts on what is going on in the Ohanes Ndibo um, circle, if you like? Well, it's nothing new. Um... At times, um, some people don't feel like they, they can't. They don't find it. They can't find their voice, or they think that they are not getting enough attention. Um, so that is what is happening to organizing people. Don't forget also that the periphery also had the same issue. Um, that is why you have the reform, or uh, is it reformed or refined or whatever um, uh, uh, group that came out, out of that uh, periphery, of which uh, I think. Uh, uh, what is his name now? Uh, Odumaki, the secretary of the secretary of the secretary of that party. That's this uh, group. So it is expected. Um, I believe that um, it is just a phase. Uh, but for for goodness' sake, um, there is no problem in people um, achieving their aims or coming up with other. Aims. My only problem is that uh, during the the way it has been registered by the case, um, where we see it register. A, an organization with similar name, if it is, except it is not, but uh, the Igbos are everywhere in the world, and they run into millions. Um, a, a, an organization, one organization might not be able to take care of the interest of them. So, so uh, I personally, it is more the merrier for me. Uh, if it is not for selfish interest, and it's, if it's for the collective good of the people they are trying to represent, I don't have any issue with that. So, if uh, there's a Another group that calls itself whatever name of the person, and they think that they can be able to um, further the agitations and the aspirations of the evil man or woman as it were, all well and good. But if it's for selfish reasons or to undermine uh, the integrity of the existing one, that is where I'm going to have challenges, I have challenges with them. Mm -hmm. So, more than for me. All right, let's encourage uh, you know, our viewers to grab a copy of the Guardian newspaper today and find details of that story. But before we wrap up on this segment, let's look at uh, the experts warning that there will be more cases of coronavirus and more deaths in the coming weeks. And if you move around in Nigeria, Lagos, let me say, Lagos precisely, which is the epicenter, 
People still move on. There are some parts of Lagos where it seemed like coronavirus never happened. How are we going to, what will happen? What do we need to do to raise the level of uh, consciousness, the consciousness of people to take COVID-19 seriously, even as you know, um, we're opening up gradually? You know, the problem I have with our people is the first thing you hear them say, God forbid, not be my portion, not going to be my portion. And we believe so much in uh, self, uh, self um, religious beliefs than to um, do the needful. But uh, the spike is not just going to be in Nigeria. Don't forget, it's already in the United States of America and other parts of the, the world. It's already right. Um, some states in the United States are supposed to um, open up a few days ago have decided to go back to lockdown because the cases are rising by the day. So uh, the same thing is expected in Nigeria. But the problem is that unlike the other advanced countries are making concerted effort to make sure that they follow the necessary precautions and rest of the Here it is, people don't even believe that there's coronavirus. When you look at the number, they say, oh, we don't mind them. Nah, big man disease and the rest of them. That is not the way to go. Um, some say, oh, we never see the person, people, we make a good shot, we had them die. Do you have to see somebody that died of COVID-19 for you to believe that it is a, it's existing? That is a, a problem. Even the various protocols put in place, even transportation, go to the bus stop and see how people are rushing, um, uh, BRC buses and rest of them in Lagos. No protocol, nobody's observing it. Even the ones that the Lagos government said that sit on one, have one seat, leave the other and see the other. The whole place is jam-packed. So... It is a big problem, and it's to, but we continue to enlighten our people. We continue to do, especially the media, we have a lot, we've been doing a lot in this regard, and we continue to do that, making sure that we inform the people rightly. But it is now um, God for us all and everybody to himself. Mm. But this problem is there. Coronavirus, COVID-19 is real. People are dying. And uh, I won't say that more people will die because that is wishing <laughs> that people die. But definitely, if we don't do the right thing, then some people are going to be the victims. So let us just do the right thing right. and use common sense. I mean, I, 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 complete, I completely agree with you when you say coronavirus is real. I mean, in our station yesterday, we had a survivor who came and spoke on the news and shared her experience. That's to say, yes, you know, when people keep saying they've not seen real people, uh, that's part of what we do here in Plus TV Africa, to be able to, you know, bring it to the fore and encourage everyone out there to do the needful. I want to say thank you so very much, Mr. Wandu, for being with me this morning virtually and to review the thank papers. You. Keep safe out there. Thank you for the same with you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. And that's how we call it a wrap on Off the Press. Remember, the time is 8.30, Monday to Friday, here on PLOS TV Africa. We take a look at the newspaper and make sense of it. My name is Amaka Okoye saying, keep staying safe out there.